Support Wrestle Talk. Hello, welcome to the missed news list that we do on the Wrestle Talks on the Sundays. I'm still not Adam. Adam isn't here again. He's a bloody part timer, isn't he? He's he, he's lazy. He only shows up to work sometimes. You know what? Adam is like Roman Reigns in that he only shows up sometimes. So you know what? Tweet him at Adam the Blompier on Twitter and tell him that Adam is Roman Reigns. And I'm sure he, he's gonna feel so embarrassed about that because no one wants to be like Roman. Roman Reigns, right? Yeah. Suck it, Adam. Anyway, hi, I'm Pete. Here's 10 news stories from this week that you might have missed. Consider subscribing and liking this video if you haven't already. Would be much appreciated, and we do daily wrestling news videos here, in case you didn't know. Number 1. SmackDown Women's Title Match Cut Short SummerSlam was a show filled with big moments, especially for the women's division. On the Raw side, you had Bianca Belair and Becky Lynch tearing it up again for the Raw Women's Championship, Becky's subsequent babyface turn, and the returns of Bayley, Dakota Kai, and Io Sky to form a new heel stable. Meanwhile, the SmackDown Women's Championship match saw Ronda Rousey seemingly turn heel after a controversial loss to Liv Morgan. Though, apparently reports say that she's not a heel, so who knows? Despite this being a positive move for the brand, the match preceding it was surprisingly very short at just 4 minutes and 35 seconds. According to Brian Alvarez of Wrestling Observer on Twitter, the Liv vs Ronda match had a lot of time cut from their bout due to the Miz and Logan Paul going long earlier in the night. That Miz vs Paul bout went over 14 minutes. With that being one of the better matches on the card though, couldn't they have cut one of the several video packages, or Mayor Kane announcing the attendance? Number 2. Brock Lesnar not retiring Speaking of SummerSlam, the show closed on an absolutely bonkers last man standing match where Roman Reigns retained the undisputed WWE Universal Championship over Brock Lesnar. After the Beast Incarnate gave fans one of the most surreal sights in WWE history with him lifting the ring with a tractor and the event went off the air, Lesnar crawled back into the elevated ring, climbed up to the turnbuckle, put his cowboy hat on and tipped his hat to the Nissan Stadium crowd in Nashville as a thank you and maybe a goodbye? Kinda seems like a retirement angle, right? After Brock reportedly walked out ahead of the July 22nd edition of SmackDown following Vince McMahon's retirement and returned after making an agreement with WWE, many fans wondered if SummerSlam would be Lesnar's final match for the company. However, the new promotional ad for the January 2023 Day 1 event in Atlanta has Brock Lesnar as the marquee name. Although, card is subject to change, this seems to be a good sign that everyone's favourite wrestling cowboy will be back. Number 3. Possible Reason for Theory missing Raw. The third player in the SummerSlam main event was Mr. Money in the Bank Theory. After failing to cash in his briefcase at the event and being prominently featured across both main roster brands during the build-up to SummerSlam, many fans were curious why the youngest United States champion in history was absent from Raw this week. He's been getting one hell of a push lately. Well, it seems like the 25-year-old Theory may have been mourning the loss of his uncle who passed away over the weekend. Mr. Money in the Bank shared this news via Instagram on Sunday while reflecting on the memories they shared together. We here at WrestleTalk send our thoughts and condolences to Theory and his family. Number 4. Dakota Kai Last Minute Return As previously mentioned, the new stable of returning stars of Bayley, Io Sky, and Dakota Kai was the biggest surprise of SummerSlam, but none shocked more fans than Kai, who was released from WWE in April. This firmly cemented that we are living in a Triple H world now. Speaking on WWE's The Bump, which I'm told is a show that still exists, the former NXT Women's Tag Team Champion admitted that her return to the promotion was a last minute move, saying, You thought you'd seen the last of me, huh? Honestly, it still feels like a whirlwind to me with everything that happened. It all happened so last minute too, so to be talking with you guys right now is insane to me. Everything that's happened since Saturday has been insane. Number 5. Road Dog says NXT was never competition for AEW. Road Dog Brian James has had a lot to say about All Elite Wrestling as of late. After calling the TNT Championship a jabroni title and saying AEW looks like an indie show with nice cameras, I know we are all surprised that Tony Khan doesn't want to hire the WWE Hall of Famer, right? Speaking on Busted Open Radio, Road Dog reflected on the Wednesday Night Wars between NXT and AEW, when he worked as a creative force for the black and gold brand. James explained why those within NXT never saw themselves as competition for the new competitor to WWE by saying that Triple H had a different outlook on the show compared to Vince McMahon, wanting it to be a tryout thing. Hunter had a different philosophy. Train them, make sure they're good to go before you put them on TV. It's two totally different philosophies. Speaking from NXT, and I say this from sitting in every meeting when it was black and gold and writing, producing and directing, we never once thought we 
we were competing with those guys. We looked at ourselves as a developmental program. Sure, Jan. James then went on to state that he doesn't think it's fair to compare a developmental program with what AEW was offering with guys like Chris Jericho and John Moxley. You know what? Maybe Road Dogg's right. Maybe NXT was just a lowly developmental program with Finn Balor, Adam Cole, Matt Riddle, Rhea Ripley, Bianca Belair, Johnny Gargano, and Tommaso Ciampa. All those guys and gals that needed to be developed. Number six, Kevin Nash on Triple H in charge. Triple H being in control of creative in WWE has remained a hot topic after a critically acclaimed SummerSlam and Raw this week. And who knows about SmackDown because this is being recorded before it. One person who knows the game very well is Kevin Nash. On his Click This podcast, the former Diesel discussed the reshuffling in WWE, saying, in all honesty, I think they're in a better situation than they were, with Paul Levesque Triple H being in charge of creative. Big Sexy then went on to express his belief that Triple H is the right man and has the right team around him. You put the magic that he has and the creative mind that he has, I think moving forward is going to be a dynamic that does take this company up and forward. Number seven, Hiromu Takahashi's belongings stolen. New Japan star and junior division ace Hiromu Takahashi made a rare trip to the United States over StarCast 5 weekend in Nashville. After scoring a win over Blake Christian on last Saturday's New Japan Music City Mayhem event, the Los Ingobernables de Japón member returned to his hotel room and found his belongings were stolen. Speaking on Yahoo Japan, Hiromu explained what was taken and his reaction, saying, I generally keep valuables with me when I am abroad, but two t-shirts, a tank top, two pairs of shorts, and a neck pillow that I washed and hung in my room were missing. The amount of money may not be that big, but I was so pissed off that I told the front desk clerk, hey, I just got back from the show and everything is gone. Despite this incident, Takahashi explained that he still thinks America is great and plans to return as many times as he can. Number 8. Nobody Wants to Take the Swing Claudio Castagnoli has been riding a wave of momentum since signing with AEW. The current Ring of Honor world champion has kept much of what made him a popular star during his time in WWE, including his moveset. One of Claudio's signature moves is, of course, the swing. However, he recently admitted that not everyone is fond of the move. Appearing on Insight with Chris Van Vliet during StarCast 5 weekend, the former Cesaro discussed his opponents saying that taking the swing is one of the least favorite things to do in wrestling. I've heard from many people that it is their least favorite move to take and they absolutely hate it to the point where they just refuse to take it because it makes them so dizzy, they hate it. I just tell them to relax, which I guess is the wrong thing to tell them. You keep doing that swing, Claudio. We all love it and we don't have to take it. Therefore, we love it more. Number nine, Brian Danielson and Flaccid penises. Speaking of StarCast 5 weekend, the stage show that provided the most headlines had to be Brian Danielson's appearance on the sessions with Renee Paquette. From admitting that he didn't enjoy being on Total Bellas or that he wanted to deck the Miz in their famed Talking Smack segment, this is a must-watch interview. One of the funniest things to come out of this conversation is Brian being an admitted locker room bully and not liking when people are on their phones when they can talk about important topics like flaccid penises. After being accused by Paquette of f***ing with people, Danielson protested, I'm not f***ing with people. I came in and and everybody was on their phones in the locker room. That's not what I want. The last three years of my career, I don't want to spend in the locker room with a bunch of young guys looking at their phone. So we start, we talk about flaccid penises. Asexually. We're not talking about anything that would be considered perverted. It's just amongst the boys. It's the boys talking about flaccid penises. It is a blast. Ha <laughs> ha. That sure sounds like, ha. <laughs> A conversation, that's for sure. And finally, number 10, yay for wrestling relationships. We're once again going to end this week's list with some positive news. Love is in the air in the wrestling business all around. Love even goes through the forbidden door as Impact Wrestling's Tennille Dashwood posted a photo on both Twitter and Instagram of herself and WWE's Mad Cat Moss at a bar with the caption, finally found my captain. This would seem to indicate that the two were now a couple. Using my insane detective mind right there, the two stars worked in WWE together from 2014 to 2017, so it seems like the connection has developed from there. Another relationship started in WWE was between AEW's own Sean Spears and the former Peyton Royce, real name Cassie Lee, who got married in 2019. After announcing in April that she and her iconic slash inspiration tag team partner Jesse McKay was stepping away from wrestling, Lee has stayed under the radar. In a similar fashion, Spears hasn't been in the ring since losing a steel cage match to Wardlow on the May 25th edition of Dynamite. This week, the couple has revealed what they've been up to in an Instagram post where they announced that they are expecting their first child. Congratulations to Sean Spears and Cassie Lee on becoming new parents. We love love here. And that's going to do it for our list. Is there any news stories that you thought from this week that we should have spoken about? Let us know in the comments. And we're going to have more daily wrestling news videos coming soon on WrestleTalk, so subscribe, watch other WrestleTalk videos, and enjoy other content. I've been Chopper B. Quinnell. Goodbye. Yeah.